There's breaking news. CNN's Kara Scannell is joining us. She has the latest on these late-breaking developments involving an effort by House Democrats to get President Trump's financial records. So what are you learning, Kara? That's right. Well, so a federal judge has just ruled that Donald Trump's accounting firm, Mazars, is required to turn over his financial records and documents to the House committee that had sought and subpoenaed for them. That is a huge win for Congress, which has been seeking access to the president's financial records, both Mazars, the accounting firm, and also with Deutsche Bank. Now, the judge in a 41-page ruling said that it, Congress was well within its rights. I'm going to read a line from this opinion where he said that history has shown that congressionally exposed criminal conduct by the president or a high-ranking executive branch official can lead to legislation. He also, in that opinion, cited the Watergate investigation. This is a huge win for the House committees that have been seeking Donald Trump's financial records. Now, the judge also importantly said that he would not stay, or that is, delay the, um, the accounting firm's adherence with the subpoena so Donald Trump could appeal. So that's also a very critical thing. This does not mean that the accounting firm or Donald Trump and the Trump Organization, which has sought to keep these records private, it doesn't mean that they can delay now um, complying with the subpoena. So it is likely that soon we will start to see some of these financial records from this accounting firm end up with Congress and they will begin to have the ability to review these records. Now, this is not exactly a surprise, this decision, because the judge last week in the hearing had a lot of skepticism about the Donald Trump's arguments here. You know, he's not, he wanted to block this, saying that there was no legislative reason for Congress to have this. And the judge is saying that, you know, Congress is well within its right here and there is history on their side, citing Watergate specifically, Wolf. All right, so we just got the 41-page uh, document from the U.S. District Court of Appeals, uh, excuse me, from the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. Uh, no White House reaction yet, but I assume they will go ahead and appeal this to a higher federal court. I would expect that they would, although, you know, even in last week's hearing, the lawyers for Donald Trump and the organization, you know, had indicated that the stay here was everything, because if they're not able to stay compliance with the subpoena, that it means that these documents will end up in the hands of Congress. And there's nothing that they will be able to do. As they said, you know, the, the cat will be out of the bag at that point. Uh, but I do think we can expect them to appeal. And this issue is coming to a head just on Wednesday in New York, where they, Donald Trump and the Trump Organization have sued Deutsche Bank to try to stop them complying with a different House subpoena. Uh, so now here's one decision that is going to be at least near-term precedent for that judge in New York. From the U.S. District Court here uh, in the District of Columbia. Stand by. Manu Raju is uh, our senior congressional correspondent. Manu, Manu, it looks like, at least uh, right now, this is a significant win for the Democrats in the House. No question about it, because Democrats have been pursuing all aspects of the Trump presidency, aspects from before he was president, wanting to get everything from his tax returns to the financial records, the accounting records, uh, as well as bank records from different banks like Deutsche Bank and the like. And this victory here for the Democrats, they could uh, presumably hope they hope they can turn into victories in other court battles that are looming over all of those issues. Now, the significant thing in this opinion is what the judge said, is what Kara pointed out, that the, the, the judge believes that these kind of investigations could eventually lead to legislation. And that's because what the White House and Trump Organization have been arguing is that there's no legitimate legislative purpose for seeking these records, which is why they say that these subpoenas are essentially invalid and the court should block these subpoenas. But here in this case, the judge clearly disagrees and says that Congress has the right to assert itself in these areas. And now this comes at a significant moment, Wolf, because of the number of requests that the White House and the Trump Organization are rejecting on all fronts as Democrats try to pursue investigations on this particular one involving Mazars. That came in the aftermath of Michael Cohen's testimony before the House Oversight Committee when he alleged the president, before he was president, inflated his wealth improperly as he tried to purchase the Buffalo Bills football team. Now the Democrats presumably will get answers to those questions and then they can decide how to proceed from there. So a shot in the arm for the Democratic investigations going forward. But the White House will likely fight this in court. The Trump Organization will likely fight this on appeal. We'll see if they ultimately win. But at the moment, one victory here for Democrats in, in the face of an ongoing battle with the White House over all these record requests that they're just not getting at the moment. Wolf. And there are so many other battles. Uh, I, I wonder, Manu, if this decision by this one U.S. District Court judge will have ramifications on the other legal battles that are underway to get information from the Trump uh, administration. 
it, they very well could, but we expect each of these battles to play out differently or separately. They're one by one, they're going to work their way through the court system. We'll see how they ultimately impact one another. Uh, but that's what the Democrats had hoped for, that they hoped that they could get an early victory here that could change the complexion of all these battles that are now looming. And Wolf, just today we saw them, the White House again defy another uh, Democratic subpoena to get Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, to testify before the House Judiciary Committee tomorrow, but the White House saying that he is immune from testimony because he's a former White House official. They say that uh, Justice Department opinions and guidelines and precedent, they argue, is on their side for not allowing congressional officials to not uh, appear before the, before Congress. So they're fighting on that front. They're saying that uh, Don McGahn should not appear that fight also likely to end up in court. So the question, Wolf, is whether or not the victory here uh, involving this separate case could have an impact on these other matters, including getting testimony from high-ranking officials like Dom McGahn, getting records from people like Dom McGahn, getting financial records from things like Capital One Bank, as well as Deutsche Bank, as well as getting those six years of the president's tax returns that are being sought after by the House Ways and Means Committee that the Treasury Department has said no to, and that will ultimately end up in court. So this could still take some time to play out, but at the moment, at least this victory, Democrats hope, could turn into getting scores of records that so far they haven't been able to get, Wolf. Let me read to you, Manu, a quote from this uh, U.S. District Court uh, judge's decision, uh, and, and this is a direct quote. Uh, These are facially valid legislate, legislative purposes, and it is not for the court to question whether the committee's actions are truly uh, motivated by political considerations. Uh, this is a significant statement. And remind our viewers, Mana, why the House Oversight Committee wants this information from the president's former accounting firm. What's, what's the purpose of trying to obtain it? Well, they're trying to follow up on all the allegations that Michael Cohen, the former attorney, laid out in his high-profile hearing before the House Oversight Committee in March. You'll recall that he, lay, he, he alleged that the president, before he was president, even while president, engaged in some criminal conduct. And one of them was how he dealt with purchase, trying to purchase the Buffalo Bills football team and whether he improperly inflated his wealth and, and, and essentially uh, committed fraud of sorts to try to get this kind of information. So the, the Democrats said to this company, Mazar said, give us 10 years of the president's financial records so we can understand whether or not the president, when he was a private citizen, acted improperly in any way. And that's what the White House, that's what the Trump organization fought and tried to get this court to side with them, which they, at the moment, appear to have failed to do so. We'll see how they have deal with uh, on appeal. But that statement that you just read, Wolf, very significant because that is the essence of several White House arguments to try to deny these Democratic requests by saying, look, there is absolutely no reason for for Congress to seek this information because there's no, quote, legitimate reason for getting this. There's no legitimate legislative reason. They argue this is all politics intended to harass the president. They've said that in a number of letters back to Congress as they try to deny the, these, these demands for a range of records, whether it's about an obstruction of justice investigations, whether it's about the tax returns, or whether it's about these financial records. But now when you have a federal judge saying, it's not my decision here to decide whether or not this is acting properly to get into the motivations of members of Congress, to get into whether political considerations, that's a significant statement essentially saying this is Congress's right to oversee the administration. The administration has to turn this over and politics is not something that this judge can make a decision on. So we'll see how other judges ultimately decide, but that is a real, uh, really undermines what the White House's pushback has been as Democrats have sought records on a whole wide range of topics and and at least in this aspect, appear to be successful. And on another very sensitive matter, you mentioned Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, uh, the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler. He argued that the president already waived his executive privilege when he let McGahn uh, speak for some 30 hours before Robert Mueller and the Russia investigators. So why is the Justice Department now saying this is different? Well, they're saying that they're, this is different because they're citing a separate aspect. They're saying that a, a legal opinion from the Justice Department in 2014 says that high-level White House officials, including former officials, 
are, not, are immune from congressional subpoenas. They do not have to comply with congressional subpoenas, much like, as they argue, the Justice Department argues, the president himself is not, could not be compelled to come to Capitol Hill and give testimony if he were to be subpoenaed. That is their argument they're citing from the Obama Justice Department. They say that this goes back a number of years. Now, the, the issue that they're going to face is that in one, this is similar to a 2007 episode involving the former White House counsel at the time under George W. Bush, Harriet Myers, when the Democrats in Congress wanted to compel her testimony. They, the, the Bush administration in that case lost its effort to fight this Democratic subpoena. Democrats are going to argue that this they should lose in this case, too. So if it goes to court, they will cite that uh, ruling to try to argue that they could get that Dom again should turn over these records and should also testify before Congress. But at the moment, Wolf, what we expect this committee to do, the House Judiciary Committee, still have a hearing tomorrow, even though Dom McGahn has been instructed by the White House not to show up 